Let's do it like this. Or like this. <laughs> In between them. So, the guy on the left, this guy right here, is Riebeck. His name is Riebeck. He is a developer that works on the... Uh, I think he works in both teams. I think he does some uh, development on the data side, so everything that is behind the game. But he also coordinates with people that... Um, the other team that deals with the visuals. So he works with the Unity team, let's call them, the guys who present everything that we see in the game. And this guy right here is Papino. He is one of the lead developers of the game. He actually does the code, makes big decisions. And that's why you will always see him whenever the topic is um, retro, Dofus 2.0 and Unity moving forward. So, before we move on to anything, we wanted to go back on the very few weeks, the last few weeks, who were really, really hard, long, arduous. There was a rollback that was impromptu. We did not expect it. And there were many, many elements that we wanted to just take a moment, go on live, and then speak to you guys about it. Uh, we had the event that we've all participated in and made banks doing that. That was the first gesture of compensation. And other elements that we had to really discover. Right, Rebecca, can you go back and give us some details? What are we living every week? That doesn't excuse, but explains the, the maintenance, the complexity that we've been having uh, in recent times. So this is a project that we've had for over a year and a half that we had presented to you in September in one of the dev blogs when we talked to you about the different projects of enhancement, continuous enhancements of our servers. And there were two main axes. The first one was to change the format of the data, the underpinning of how we make the game. Let me give you an example. Uh, Take the example of the quest of a certain player that was coded as A, B, C, D. But because the formats evolve and we need to add new things to them, so the old formats, in order to keep up with times, we need to modify that format, the A, B, C, D. We need to go back and review all the data and modify the underpinning format so that it's more agile and we can add new things to keep up with time. So that was the first point. The second point is the real-time saving. Now, as you know, there is a save that is regular and it happens frequently and it is when the player disconnects that we save all the information is accumulated during their session. But the other idea that we have in order to enhance the server, we want we want it so that when a player makes one action, it is saved. <laughs> you click anything, it is saved immediately. So before he disconnects, so this is a project that we've been working on for about a year now. And we've progressively, uh, throughout the year, we've moved on to different topics relating to the save, the saving mechanism. So we've done the inventories at the, at the beginning of the year, which was a big, big topic around here. We had, if I want to get into a bit more details, just to give you a bit more context and the difficulties that that brings about, it was at the level of the signatures, the effects that are very specific. And those were saved in a very specific format. And what happens is during transfers, some items which had those signatures would be lost. So we did patch it, we corrected it. And just to go back on the actuality, recent stuff that has happened, two topics has happened, have happened. So the first one is one year, one week and, and a half was the uh, live uh, what's the word? Yeah, live achievements. They had changed something about live achievements that was linked to the character rather than linked to the account as a whole. So what we realized is that a few hours after re after opening the server, <laughs> that, that the save that used to happen in real time would happen so frequently that it created lag. <laughs> so, so globally, we've created a system where players DDoSed us. So by sending a lot of requests with every move that needed to be saved, they started sending so many requests live in-game that the servers were like, what is happening? DDoS attack. Crash, crash, crash. <laughs> we created far too many requests per second and it was untenable. It was at the level of the savings that would happen when you use validate an achievement. So that kind of save and ping cr hurt 
the system and we had to reduce the server capacity to half and then do a maintenance the next day so we can save data and keep the server sort of plain and functional and so that the server could handle it much easier and if we want to go back on the last week so from last tuesday another topic of live saving it was the characteristics one i've got a nice little thing to tell you about it it was a backup that was so big so broadly in the characteristics we had some issues with uh, a few hours after the main again a few hours after le uh, releasing the maintenance the problem that we had tuesday came from there was a conflict between the legacy code that was there from so long ago and the new code and so what happened is some save requests arrived at the same time and what happened is a clash so sometime after the reopening there was one or two players that would lose a save uh, an alignment that would lose a quest so people were starting to lose their saves the achievements and things like that. So if there, were, uh, if there was a big volume of achievements and requests that was coming at the same time, the server would take a break and be like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not gonna take you, I'm gonna take you. So it, it made decisions, which meant some people lost some data. So you'd validate an achievement and it would not register on your account or server later on. And the same thing happened with characteristics. So the lost data were not that important but there were a handful of players that were concerned and hurt so but to save them case by case was virtually impossible not a chance on top of that there were players who were locked and blocked for a long time so we've decided the only solution we had was to roll back the whole thing and go back on saner safer grounds so in general the lost characteristics were not saved and we found traceabilities that they were not saved they did not they were not intrinsically saved so what did we did is uh, make a decision shall we go and rectify them one by one go back to each character and rectify them or and some sales even oh i didn't know that some sales so you've put something up for sale for seven mil listen to this eslix i didn't know this so they're telling us more things that we didn't know about if you put something mm -hmm. up for sale at 7 mil and somebody yeah. bought it, the server could decide only 4 mil of that was going to be saved and not the other three. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? so some people sold things but received a small portion of the cameras and they were like, where the hell is my, where's my money? Yeah, so <laughs> basically what, I've, what I got from this is that they, uh, so they are uh, slowly implementing updates for Unity. Mm. They are slowly implementing them throughout the year. Yeah. But later on, maybe we'll go over that later. But basically what, uh, what's happening is if they have like a certain code that mm -hmm. they, they made, they basically have to implement it straight away. Because if there's like a couple of days or weeks uh, who will go over, like let's say they have the code right now ready mm -hmm. and they wait a month. Mm -hmm. the, the code that they made will not wor work anymore, basically. So they have to implement them throughout the upcoming months basically for the codes to work mm -hmm. but yeah what went wrong is basically the um the saving of uh of data basically yeah so you have the backup system that happens what is it like 11 a.m in the morning 4 p.m in the afternoon it's usually the, like the short server backups so they, they had that one that would happen and we would type a message at the bottom of your chat, the one that we also save in has happened. There's a little miniature lag and then you can carry on as if nothing had happened. But there was also another one type of save that was linked to every character and their session. So when you fire yeah. up your character, it loads up the data from the server about how you last left it. And then you start changing that data, but it's not saving as you play, trade make achievements and when you log out of your character then it creates another snapshot a save point so what they were trying to test is something a, le um, a lot less reliant on old code that is more mm -hmm. agile which meant every action that you performed it just saved it immediately but what happened is that was too overwhelming for their servers imagine they didn't think that every little action performed by every character playing in the yeah. game at one saving would cause lag so that's why there were big lags for the last yeah. couple of weeks.
Yeah, and the reason why they are implementing this is basically so that we don't have to have rollbacks in the future. Because yeah. basically what, what happens now, because all the uh, savings are based on when you lock on and off. Mm -hmm. So if they want to do a rollback, they have to do a rollback to a certain point where everyone is saved at the same time, which is the maintenance or, um, or for example, mm. server backup. But in the future, what will happen is they could potentially just do a 30 minutes rollback or a 15 minute rollback because everything or that you do is saved uh, while you play. That is such a good point. Or an individual rollback. If they found that Slix has been naughty, they could just roll back his own data because we have so many example, yeah. save yeah. points. It's not tied to an entire session or yeah. the entire server, so to speak. Yeah. That is such a good point, actually. That's also why you sometimes have to relock if you get if you unlock certain achievements uh, <laughs> that you you have to relock to actually unlock them because it doesn't s automatically save it. <laughs> they will talk about this Artagun, but he's telling us off. I I, I have never put my hands on any piece of code. <laughs> he's telling us to do some fucking testing in development environment. I have no idea what those words mean, but thank you for that Artagun. <laughs> <laughs> they also ask oh. later on in the stream if we uh, they ask the chat so I think there were like 1500 people watching oh, they wow. ask if uh, if we would want um, the beta server to always be up so yeah, yeah, they could yeah, yeah, actually yeah, yeah, yeah. Do... don't burn don't burn that that was really cool that was really cool yeah, let's okay. get we to it first later, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as Lix is on the wine this evening we're going fast boys <laughs> and girls <Go>. <laughs> 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 So he's talking about the fact that here, when a mistake happens, like when you, someone sells something for 7 mil but only received 4, that was untenable. You couldn't manually fix for that because of the amount of them happening. Makes so sense. they didn't want to roll back and they didn't want to fix it individually. But because everybody knows about rollbacks and the PTSD that, that we all have lived just by having many of them over the time. It's never a moment that we like internally in the team. And because at the same time, if you think about it, for us developers, it is an admission of failure. So as soon as you roll back, you have conceded that you failed in your technician and developer role. But yeah. because there are things a lot more important. Oh, no, sorry, let me just rewind this one. So it is an admission of failure. And because uh, we either missed an element or uh, because we've taken too big a risk without calculating it properly. So big updates. So it is an admission of failure every time we do a rollback. We don't take it lightly at all. But it was necessary on uh, Tuesday to find a better situation to the problem that we had and we couldn't solve for manually. So and on that basis, we had to do a maintenance on Wednesday and Thursday to solve two critical problems linked to characteristics. So the first one was linked directly to the saving uh, thing that we've just mentioned now. We couldn't leave it like that at all. We couldn't leave it like that for a week while we solve it later. And we've noticed also that if you disconnected in the middle of a fight and you, you get your, your HP back, we found that you've actually enjoyed that. We've used it a lot. <laughs> and the information circulated so fast towards us, but even faster in your community. And I'm sure that you've used it a lot without holding back. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you it's also important to... Hold on. Did you say something? I say we always abuse when something is... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Good. What the hell not? Yeah. So uh, most people that have abused that one was uh, in PvP. So you'd have a turn, someone would hammer you down properly, you'd log off, log in, you get your full HP back and then you go back yeah. in there. People were also using it for very hard quest fights. Ah, that is cool. But sadly, they rolled back after that, didn't they? If I had known about this, I would have completed the um, slubber plus fight on three of my characters. They are still oh. stuck there. Oh, but then roll back. <laughs> ah, yeah, true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, crafty, that is, an, that is a re really good point. Most people don't hear about bugs, exploits and hacks in general. And there's a very good security reason for that. Because if you think about it, if you spot that one person found a glitch or a hack and is abusing it, then you, you have a limited area where you can work and solve for the problem. But if all of a sudden you broadcast it, you've lost that ability to solve for it locally. 
it has mm -hmm. propagated. And then as a developer, the only option you have is to roll back the whole thing, uh, unwind the tape, as opposed to just go into the area, solve for it, and then carry on as if nothing had happened. And most people will never know whatever it is that you've done. But he, he did stress it earlier. They never take the rollback decision can, lightly. Can I add something for, uh, on that, uh, go, go. Walt? Uh, so for those of you who are maybe interested in how coding works a little bit, I uh, I know someone, some uh, Fort, uh, Fortnite developers actually explain how this works. So they have like a ban system. If someone is hacking, they can literally ban it in 10 seconds. They can detect ban instantly, but they don't do it on purpose. They don't instant ban. And you want, want to know why? Because mm. they want to know how these people are bypassing their um, oh. their programs to be able to hack? They mm. are actually watching them hacking, so mm. they so, so basically Fortnite can actually know how they are hacking and they are bypass bypassing the system because normally you can't hack uh, so easy in a, in a game like Fortnite because it's so big, right? Yeah. So what they do is they let these people actually hack. So they can uh, rewrite See, their uh, code and make sure it doesn't happen. If they ban they, those people, uh, then they will just rewrite a new code and they will hack again. Right, gotcha. That is, that is incredible. That's so pretty interesting. So they try and cure it while it is happening. Yeah, they are basically just watching what, what they are using to bypass <laughs> their system and then they will rewrite their code oh, wow. to make sure that because otherwise there's like um because there there are literally people who sell these hacks mm. and there's like black markets for it right because people are using them in competitive tournaments make big yeah, money yeah 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 and what they what's happening is if a lot of people are using them then and they just all ban them then they cannot never find out how how these hacks work right so yeah. they just let the people let them play Mm. And they figure out how these hacks work, yeah. and then rewrite the code, and then the hacks won't work again. Gluto is a game developer here in the UK, and he's saying, so you can also detect the cheaters, add them to a list, and then exactly. after a few months you do yeah. a big ban wave. But also it's less wave, about yeah. learning how they hack, it's instead not giving away how they were detected. So yeah. you, if I understood that correctly, you're trying to, to catch them, uh, supervise them from a distance, learn mm -hmm. how they do it, solve for it without them knowing that you know about it. <laughs> yeah, and then they do it in, in, in a big band wave and then fix the uh, mm. code or whatever. This is four-dimensional chest, boys and girls. <laughs> 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 right, so the last thing we were saying is uh, they were making poking fun at how the community as a whole thoroughly enjoyed the HP uh, glitch where you could log off, log in, and then full, full HP back again. <laughs> We've seen that you've, the, you've used it a lot. The information circulated super fast between you. You did not wait long to make the most out of it. So, I think it's interesting. It would be interesting if we talk about how these roadworks, so to speak, uh, are progressing. So the first project is one that we started a year ago, but we've had to do six or seven months of preparatory work because there were some things that were categorically incompatible. Like I can remember one uh, change that we've made. There was a fixed save that we that we had implemented. So the five minute five minute save that used to happen every day at four we've moved it from five minutes to three seconds. So this is the kind of things that... Mm. And we've also... Uh, so a year ago, well, for, for an entire year, we have gone over about two thirds of the saving data. I don't have the exact data, but it should be between half and two thirds of the data that are saved in real time in the entire code of the game. And the subject that was the most consequent was the inventory one, which had happened in the beginning of the year, without getting too much into details, but that one allowed us to change the format of the data that we hold about the inventory of players to add new functionalities in uh, the inventories. So, and th this is in preparation to being able to block an item. This is something we couldn't do before, but now we can do. It's a small change that we've implemented and it works. So it allows us new functionalities in the future, but it it remains there remains a lot a handful of technical subjects we haven't gone over. 
have you noticed here, Slix, that they do sometimes make changes that we like, we want, and we enjoy, but we don't notice them when they work. We only notice the ones that they fail to implement. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. We like, always notice when the Infinite Dreams is bugged again. <laughs> yeah. Like that the one actually, where... Uh, I will actually write this down uh -huh. for future talks that might happen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that we maybe or maybe not talk about. Uh -huh. But um, I will actually ask, uh, what is the reason behind the fact that always when a new update comes out, mm -hmm. something with the infinite dreams is done? <laughs> <laughs> <That is, laughs> uh, as how? Gluto would say, do not ask questions you don't want to hear the answers to. It would break your uh, heart okay, if they okay. told you, look, we don't give a shit about dreams. Only you and three others do them. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I really like the point that they made here. Now, when you do a quest and you get your ochre, which a lot of us will be getting very soon, thanks to the harvest, they are locked to your account. So even say in a very unfortunate situation where someone hacks your account, they can't take that because it's locked. That's a new feature they've added at the beginning of the year, according to him. And maybe that could be the precursor or the foundation for being able to completely lock your account nobody can trade or change anything about it and then you could let others use it like you can in other games in all security and safety any thoughts about that didn't they have that like 15 years ago something like that or it was a different game and i'm confused here but what? lock I in remember... your items yeah i remember there was something you could like turn on on your account mm -hmm. and that basically if <coughs> your account was <coughs> locked mm -hmm. Um, and you didn't unlock something that the people who were on your account they could basically play but ah. they could not trade they could not use markets they could not do anything except just play right they had I, something like that but I think Kalan I is saying Ankama Shield you can't trade if it is on yeah but I don't know if the Ankama Shield is the same because Ankama Shield is basically just a protection to even lock restraint mode says Abby I don't, is that still a thing then? I, I think you only get that. I think the only time you get all your items locked to your account without any possibility of trading them. Yeah, it was Sorry. the Ankama shield, but it got replaced <coughs> by the uh, authenticator. But so it so it doesn't exist anymore right now. Because with mm. the authenticator, you you give basically full access. So let's so let's say hypothetically, um, I want my my brother. Mm -hmm. to lock my account so he can use it for some XPing, for example, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then he can't lock because I will have to manually uh, unlock using the authenticator, right? Yeah, yeah, to access, that, that, yeah. If I do that, mm -hmm. it will give him full access to my account. Mm -hmm. But back then, you mm -hmm. could literally just have the shield. You could give someone your uh, logins, basically. They, they could play your account. But not but possible not, to trade or throw items or remove or them. Yeah. I gotcha, I gotcha. So you, I gotcha. it was a thing. I get you. But yeah, it's kind of interesting, actually. That is quite cool. Yeah. It would it would also be interesting if you could um, uh, indeed what you just mentioned lock certain things to your character so you don't. Yeah. And then oh, I remember what I was saying. The only time you have something that resembles what we're talking about now is if you get hacked or you lose your item somehow, and yeah. the support give them you back. So if they restore your items they stay they are locked permanently to your account they can't be exchanged they stay with oh, the account with the, yeah, with the yeah, character yeah. or the account i don't know exactly cool so we keep going yep let's go there's still a lot of thing technical subjects to go over and there is still a lot of things, but there's one to topic that I wanted to discuss with you, or rather give you the set mindset that we have inside the team. So I've spoke, I've spoken to our lead uh, server developer, and we've talked about the interest that we have or the cost of putting little updates with this frequency and make these many modifications in real time and changing the data format, which are the two big topics, which they go hand in hand. Actually, in at the time right now, by moving so many technical things, we, uh, we destabilize the game 
and you have felt that in these last couple of weeks, the lags and things like that. So all these modifications that we're passing through from our side, we've passed, we've had a couple of really horrible uh, weeks, but also for you as well, you didn't have time to play. And there was a rollback on top of that. But the fact is, we will probably redo or review our way of passing these technical things and review their utility over the long term. Just to give you an example, the change of the format of the data comes from, um, hold on, th this is really, really, really interesting, guys, because they're going to talk about how, for example, when you have a certificate of amount in your uh, inventory, you just see a certificate, but how is it coded? And this is what really blew my mind. And if they ever give you an answer about dreams, uh, Aslix, I think it's going to be exactly like this. Are you ready for this? <laughs> this, also, this is... Before you mention this, I <laughs> yeah. think they, will, they also uh, said they will share the details of this later on on the website. So the okay. people who are interested in how coding works and how they ah. do it, they can actually read on uh, about it. Ah, you heard that, they, they Later on, they mentioned something about API, API coding, uh -huh. whatever. I don't know. APIs. Um, API, whatever. Mm -hmm. Because that was basically the what happened yesterday, but they will explain it later. Mm. Uh, they will share later how it actually works and what uh, what was causing the server to crash yesterday evening. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh, continue. What's that question, uh, Gluto? Sorry, no, I happened. I remember watching a tutorial for Bolgrot and the guy was using his friend account while using that feature. I think you might be thinking of um, some sort of screen share uh, Hitsu. I've tried one yeah. of those before, where if you have Team Viewer, for example, you can give someone remote access to your computer, and they will oh, use yeah. their mouse and it moves within your screen. Yeah. That's a safer way of doing it if you must get there. Yeah, but you gotta be really careful with those kind of things, because there might be a third party um, <laughs> people <laughs> who can take over. Ah, uh, yeah. So it's I was really saying dangerous. Ah, uh ha -huh. ha. I said, did you hear that, Gluto? Because uh, Eslix mentioned that they are releasing more information about the code and the way they handle their data for the developers or people that know about that side of things that are interested and want to know more. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have a field day with that. Good luck with it. <laughs> you enjoy that, rather you than me. <laughs> right. Hazel will also enjoy it. Yeah, I think Hazel and Gluto could form an unholy union if we ever got them together in one room. Yeah. <laughs> That's how a great evil is born. <laughs> or great good if they manage to make a copy of the uh, Dofus game. But yeah. a better version, who knows? <laughs> a better version. We could copy everything but make it better. <laughs> yeah. They, they, you know, they play the game. They know what is wrong with it and they have a lot of ideas. Right. So the... the the data format change comes from a historical debt and i love that he used this this term right here because it perfectly described the madness he's about to unleash on us right now so some data has not set changed from the retro era i think i don't know if uh, I don't know if we've taken the time to explain how mounts were historically coded. Just to explain, just to explain, basically, a mount technically is a chain, a DB string, what we call. It is a character chain that will give all the characteristics to the mount, the race, the characteristic, the level, a level as well. But the thing is, historically, uh, on retro, when it was coded in 2004, all the mounts in the entire game are all coded in one line <laughs> this blew my mind when i heard it they're all one single line in the code so the thing is it was coded in 2004 when people were making that game they, they never anticipated that people would have a million mounts so they didn't anticipate big numbers <laughs> 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 so, and it's still the case in retro now. <laughs> <laughs> so all the data about all mounts in the entire game are coded in one line. So, which means if there are 1 million mounts, there is potentially 30 million characters, one after the other, to tell all the mounts that are on the same server. Yeah. And again, 
we have to save more data nowadays about them because there's more complexity if you guys remember the old mounts had level and their lineage and xp so they were rather simple but when they introduced sea mules and um, rhinitals they introduced new layers of com complexity like consanguinity you can't marry two uh, rhinitals from the same parents because then you will have less offspring people who breed will know about that that is all to say that they've added more complexity on a code that is all in one line. <laughs> and there's far more players and way more breeders and things to handle. So it is insane. <laughs> now I'm telling you this. It doesn't sound like much when you're not a developer. But if you're a developer, you're shaken to your core. <laughs> but because for historical things, when the game was developed in 2004, 2005... Uh, it, the question of knowing whether there would be millions of certain elements of the same thing, like the architects, it wasn't the reality back then. They didn't, didn't cross their mind. But now the game has evolved massively. It's had a massive success and continues to have massive success. So there's a lot of players on the server. So data like this is voluminous as hell. And uh, <laughs> hold on, I missed that joke. Data like this is voluminous as heck. And, and, and do you know what uh, one million, one million character next to each other means? It's massive. Hello, hello, Sevi, welcome to the stream. If you are a developer, it becomes hell. And this is why we have stopped and started adding new data formats, new uh, tweaks that were necessary just to make small parts of data handleable and keep it up to date and also the inventories it was absolutely necessary for Dofus and also unity the upcoming and we needed these new features to come uh, to it so we needed to do something with the code but the question of are we going to continue to pass uh changes on such a low scale because um, the question really poses itself um we need to prioritize the stability of the game as opposed to just try new things every week. So many things, just throw them in there. So we want the game to be playable to, for you to enjoy it every week. We don't want 2024 to be the year of February that we've had, full of instability. <laughs> it was complicated and hard emotionally and physically on everyone. <laughs> we don't want to do that all year. So. <laughs> so we'll be more careful about the planning, scheduling of what we need, the necessity of what needs to be done so that the game remains as stable as possible for you. I wanted to specify one thing because I've seen some things on uh, the chat. Uh, I don't want to throw stones at things that we've, what we've done in 2020 for, into, no, hold on, sorry. I don't want to talk badly about 2004 because um, back in 2004 they had the means of 2004 said you could only code and write and put in place things that the machines back then would allow them so technical constraints to be able to compress data and things like that today we have mm -hmm. tools that are so much more performant that allow us to have uh, more uh, consequent data that have more power more potency more under elements to them that allow for more things to be built on top of them so this is what allows us to be up to date with the current uh, landscape and as papino said when we develop something we try and envision all the possible uses that, that will happen but in dofus it's a game that lives and breathes and we try and go from what is to try and develop what things that we couldn't have possibly thought of and that we would we might need to add in the future so generally it's moments like these where we realize there's a lot of work to be done many more modifications i saw a question that was really interesting it's something that we've never uh, it has happened it has been sent us many times but why have you started to scale and uh, stock your data only in 2024 why did it just come across your mind to start doing this right now <laughs> the thing is it is not a project that was started in 2024. It was something that we started with the dev server, at least in the last two years, to my recollection. And it might have started even before, but I can't, I can't, I can't speak for that. But at, at least in the last two years, I'm 100% sure we started working on it. But there's one marking element, one important element, that has slowed our uh, march, which was 
the uh, March update from last year where there were lots of modifications about mounts. Hmm. So those who were here, so those who were here, who were present in the last March, do you know what, what they're talking about here, Eslex? I'm completely lost. I'm just translating without any... I don't know what the story is here. What happened last March with mounts? Have we lost you, Eslex? Uh, no, I'm here. I was just ah, yeah. answering a question in chat. Did you ask me anything? Oh, no, no, you keep going, you keep going. Yeah. What are we thinking, chat? When did they do the stat overhaul from... He's saying in last March... Last... Oh, that's the one, Sevi. I see what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. The one where many people got banned because they... Okay, 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 I get you. So there was a big um, update of mounts last year in March. So a year ago now. Yeah. And he's about to that's talk why, about... That's why those all those people got banned then? Yeah. I, I It Bro. just clicked right now. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> all everyone who got banned, those were uh, all people who were doing something with breeding. Yes. It was Wolf, so Wolf uh, Swai, SS yeah. Firecaster, Furex yeah. as well. Yeah. Thank goodness so, Sevi stopped before he got banned as well. Yeah. Holy shit. Th the plot thickens. <laughs> so it was their fault. Uh, would you? Whose fault could it have been? <laughs> well... Um, Not Fortnite. <laughs> some people are still saying these these people who got banned it was due to ah, Auto Hotkey, right? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's playing too it fast. Wasn't, then it wasn't uh, from Auto Hotkey at all. No, no, no. They're saying they've made a big change to the way mounts worked last year. Yeah. And he's about to give more details. I was completely clueless. Only now did I link it after reading what Sev said. And that's when they brought uh, XP potions. Ah, and stuff to compensate any mount that had all zero. And also, people who had um, every mount became fertile. So do you know those uh, certificates that are put on the market for uh, a fraction of their normal price because they're sterile, sterile? Yeah, yeah. All of them became fertile. So people started buying them up. People who had big stocks of infertile mounts that they were about to trade, they instantly became fertile. So some people had massive jumps in wealth. Yeah, and I think all of them were also back to like zero um, matings. So yeah. Them. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Hydrate. hydrate. You've read them in real life. <laughs> IRL, IRL hydrate. hydrate. <laughs> Thank you. IRL hydrate. Like no, nobody is doing you a hydrate. Uh, like I think <laughs> here, here, there you go. We have, we have a hydrate. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eslex, if you're watching. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it didn't I think get reversed. Most of those people got unbanned, yeah. Did I it? I don't know. I think it is. Furex got unbanned. I don't know if Woof got unbanned though. But with mm. this information, he sh I don't know. <laughs> that is massive. I mean, this this right here should be vindication. At least some people need to, to apologize if they've uh, accused someone of uh, <laughs> whatever. All right. So, it was hell, the last update of March. It was an, an update that was too complicated. Mm, the, um, that required many weeks of corrections. Up to two months and a half of corrective little corrections here and there. But after that, it developed. Oh. It... It, it developed, uh, like the shock of that failure made us a lot more conservatives, and that was a year ago. I don't know what changed, so they've all of a sudden in 2024 decided, right, let's reverse that. <laughs> so we've developed a reluctance, less courage to just chuck ourselves, throw ourselves at technical subjects. So we just were very scared about passing technical changes during maintenances. So from that point on, we've decided to to only pass them on when we have betas to test them before releases. So so we have had a marvelous year where there were lots of tests. We passed things only following this method so you didn't feel its impact. There were less, less and less problems than you are facing right now. You didn't feel it as much. 
there were bugs that were generated but only in the beta so you didn't feel it while playing in normal servers so the problem with that is it was my problem technically is we've lost velocity we've lost the max amount that we could pass in a year we felt constricted because if you had to pass them during small events that are scattered around the year you're less uh, prone to trying things and passing as many things so the first problem is you, you do four to eight times less attempts because you have less and also when you want when you want to pass things that for the developers if you have code that is waiting for three four five months the code is no longer sometimes it's not even it, it could be updated a week after you release it but you don't know that if you hold on to it for five months so this is why we've accelerated the number of uh, attempts things that we've tried during small maintenances but now we know that we've gone the other way around. <laughs> we've messed up a lot of the stability of the game and it's untenable. We need to adapt. We need to ensure that the game is good quality. And yeah, even if you want to pass quality things, we need to ensure stability first so you can continue to have a good time playing the game while we attempt things. Right, I've seen so many questions and it's true that for us in our boss and in our work, we don't have time to just stop and explain our thought process and what we're doing. But I've seen a question that is linked to Unity and I want to explain something really important. Th this is a very important point that we've alluded to earlier and it is coming from two senior developers in the company that are talking about Unity and something that all of us players talk about very frequently. It is a feeling that we all have that when Unity rolls out, all of these problems will sort of disappear. The world will be better. Cars will start Evolves. flying and there will be no more pollution. Here's, here's his answer to it. <laughs> so, uh, with other games like Wakfu and other sub games that we have, like... Uh, it's less separated, they have one big team. But in Dofus, we have two big teams, two distinct teams. So we have the client team, which integrated everything that you see, the interfaces, the graphics, so everything. So this part right here only will be affected by Unity. So when we talk about Unity, we're talking about the client, the visual aspect, but there's another team, the server team, the one that we're talking about today that's caused all these problems, <laughs> is the one that, so all the modifications that we're doing are in the server, the server is always going to be the same in Unity. So the modifications that we're doing today, they will also be replicable and uh, viable in. So these are in Unity. So there are two teams that are completely separate and only one of them is moving to a better graph. So there are two teams. Hold on, Sam, let me get that one. So we really have two teams that are completely separate. And also because one of the two teams that is trying to redo the game in Unity, the other game, because of that, the other one, can try and push the boat. That's why we're trying new things like uh, live savings, migrations. And I saw a question earlier about the ladder. It's also another technical thing that we've thought about and we're trying, we're, we are in the midst of redoing it. We've tried it in December and other updates will uh, happen very soon. So we're using this momentum to sort of make advances on uh, technical subjects that are viable, that will make the game keep up with the times and advance further. And there was also another thing that I've seen and I wanted to go back on. It's a question that came back many many times because we also ask ourselves the same, <laughs> the utility of beta. Uh, we have two questions vis-a-vis -vis this. So the first one is Either these technical topics we will pass them during updates We will integrate it into a beta people have three weeks to verify that everything is okay If anything is not wrong, we will fix it and then we pass it on in its final form on To the update during the update. So this was the old scheme that we're all familiar with you have a three weeks beta You go and you try stuff once you uncover uh, some sort of bugs They fix it and then when everything is fixed and they're sure that everything is all right for those three weeks Then they release it. This is the model that we're used to and on this basis, we have uh, that we've used for the changes in the last March for the mounts. And we realized that during the update, 
there are a lot of bugs that came back during the beta and it was really really complicated to focus on the ones that were brought uh, relating to the save so it wasn't really efficacious to go on those topics during the beta because sometimes sometimes so what he's saying here i'm going to paraphrase is sometimes there are big problems that they just can't think about during the beta because they have another priority they need to ensure stability of the big changes that are coming during the update so if they find this is what happened with the mounts so they are making a big update but they find that the mounts are causing a problem and that becomes an afterthought and then a problem happens after they roll it out and then they try and fix it in the, in the days after immediately <laughs> so it, it's not really a foolproof solution is what he's trying to say I think so for some time right now we tried to change the format and we thought right now we will focus on the maintenance and we will do on one on one Tuesday we will make a big change so all the teams are focused on that one topic and we will keep an eye on it so they'll be reactive if something wrong happens so this is the format that we're using today that you can see but also you see that on a normal box standard Tuesday turns out into a dev nightmare like the few ones we've had in the past. So this is why we're asking ourselves, uh, is, is the solution really to just go back to the old format? No, hold on. Ah, so the solution then, would the solution then be what some people have put forth in chats? To just have a continuous beta, have a live version. I think Gluto mentioned this earlier. You have a live version that everyone is using now to play. And in parallel, there is a beta version where they're trying stuff. And you log in to try their new changes. But I have a feeling he's gonna shoot that down. <laughs> yep. That would be... Oh, do you have something to say about this, Eslix? Is this something that, oh, you've, we, that ever crossed your is, mind? Uh, this is the part we mentioned earlier about uh, them... Uh, someone asking if they should keep the beta up for forever, basically. <laughs> and then... Instead of them um, doing the updates in the live server, which is basically causing crashes and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. Instability they, would, um, they would try this in the beta, but as you will uh, see later on, they uh, first they say there's not enough people playing the beta, that's one thing. Mm. And the other thing was, uh, I don't know, remember, just uh, continue, I think they will mention it, but not enough people are playing the beta, so there's no point in testing it over there. Mm -hmm. What do you foresee the problem they found with this? What, why, why haven't they adopted this method, do you guys think? Just before we press play and hear their actual answer. Because most... I I'm asking because most of the time we have an idea about why they don't or do things. But we're about to hear it from them. Why don't they have a solution that many people have uh, suggested in the chat? I mean, a lot of people always say in discord why don't they test things when they put them out why don't they test things mm -hmm. and i think earlier they mentioned like if they have a code they have to implement it straight away because if they wait a couple of weeks the code basically doesn't work anymore right and they mm -hmm. have to test it in the live servers because people only play in the live servers they don't have like they have the beta server but nobody plays it so they they won't notice there are any mistakes mm -hmm. so that's why when there's a major update um they will basically give, uh, I think we, we saw that last year, they will do it again in, in March, I think. Um, they will give us rewards for playing and testing beta. So there will actually be enough people playing so they can get the, the right feedback. Because otherwise, there's no point in testing because they won't get any feedback. <laughs> you are absolutely right. I think you got it straight <laughs> before we carry on. Eslix has the right answer. And sh let's just hear it from them. It was a dev nightmare. Like, people have suggested in the chat multiple times, why don't we have a permanent beta? Something that is always accessible. People can just log in. Whenever we have something to change, we'll change it there. You log in and try it. In itself, could work. We, our major worry is... Um, nobody keeps coming back to the server after a few after some time we have tried this format in the past yeah one year and a half ago because we had a big modification client side so views because of the m1 chips on the new Macs that were incompatible so we've let the beta open for about three months but what we realized is a few we days up to weeks there was literally nobody logging into the beta so the question is there 
do we do we try to have a permanent beta and then change stuff in there but at the same time will players be there will they will they be tested properly on a continuous beta as opposed to three weeks where we know for a fact that people will be flocking to testing it's an open question we're asking ourselves this we don't necessarily have the answer to this so we keep it open i've seen another question that talks about everything that has to do with smoke tests do we envision automating stuff like that how are tests right now conducted well in fact we do them every week the smoke tests every server opening every maintenance there are smoke tests that are done Smoke test means we have a file of elements that we need to observe in the game and cover them. So, uh, does a trade work? Can you open? Uh, uh, can you do a dungeon? Does the P the NPC show up? Can you teleport? You see, see what I mean? So, all the features in the game will be tested, uh, but we don't have an automated scheme. It is a topic that we're working on this year. Uh, we will see how it goes. But the other topic on which we want to work and we will work is the stress test which means actually as it stands the best ways that we have are the betas we could possibly invite you to come in uh, on one of the events and be numerous on one of the betas but we want we're working on the fact to be able to automate it internally on the server so, we'll be, so we're able to handle them automatically on the server so uh, examples like the lag problem it's really difficult ah oh, this is such a good point this is such a good point for everyone saying uh, why don't they test their shit before they release it yeah. they do run some tests they do do smoke tests they do do some version of stress test but if you think about it if the game is closed and there are 10 developers only in the server. How will they ever know whether the game is laggy or not? <laughs> There's 10 of them! They won't. They won't. It's, it's yeah. impossible. They have to actually Literally test impossible. it on the live server. <laughs> that's yeah, right, they, that's they, what he's they, saying. They have to test it on the live server or mm. actually reward people for playing better. Yeah. So that's why he's saying it's not for lack of trying, but what we try is imperfect and it has its own limitations. And here's what. No, no, Artagoon, they can't log bots, they ban bots. <laughs> <laughs> they will have to just uh, create, a, create a new server for bots to play and then they can just test that. <laughs> they should just start bot selling them server. for... Uh, imagine if you could pay a certain amount of all greens and then you have a bot, an automated bot for a day that would go and farm mining for you. <laughs> Legal by Ankama. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Thank you for that, Artagoon. <laughs> so you have, there has to be hundreds, if not thousands of people to be able to notice problems of similar nature, like and like. So we really, really need to improve our processes. And, and it's one of the objectives that we have for this year. We've deviated a bit. But what... Oh, what, what is to do with the easy anti-cheat? And I've seen this last week. We are preparing a dev blog to come back to you and give you a full situation uh, description of what's happening. Yes, it is also always a topic that is... Um, hold on, hold on. He speaks... Sometimes he will speak very slowly. And I'll have to hold back to wait for him to finish the sentence so I can connect the dots. And sometimes he just decides he's done with the sentence, so he does it in half <laughs> a second. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. So, about easy anti-cheat, I've seen the thing pass, and I've seen the dev blog just last week. We are preparing a dev blog to come back to you and give you a full situation and description of what's happening, what we want to do with it. And yes, it is always and continues to be an internal uh, topic. It is a dev blog that's happening. I won't tell you when, but it is coming. <laughs> I'm not committing. I didn't commit now. I didn't commit. Yeah, I did well. <laughs> I profit from this... Uh, I want to bounce on this opportunity because I'm seeing questions about Colosseum. It's a topic that we'll go back on. Uh, there are a few modifications that are uh, coming on for Colosseum, but we'll talk about those in in depth on the 5th of March. It looks like we're going on a Q&A with the chat. Q&A with the chat, with the chat. Please don't hesitate if you have any technical questions about the technical side that we're trying to disclose to you. This is the occasion to come and ask us questions about them. If you have any questions that, that are around Unity, updates, the events, we might, don't hesitate, we will answer, but only we don't want to go into too much detail because we have Ankama Lives on coming. Because this live is uh, improvised, we didn't prepare it. 
So we're take we're we're being late now on everything else because we're spending time here rather than go back. <laughs> so the next Ankama Live is on the fifth of March. Uh, will Unity solve all these all these problems we're talking about today? No. The Unity is a visual modification. It will not solve. This is client side. That's where Unity works. We have the dev side, and the problems we're talking about today are completely independent from Unity. Unity will change absolutely nothing about this. It will change nothing aside from the fact that we will go on more technical things and try more things and rethink things in the future. So we're sure in the future and when Unity rolls out, we have a head start. We have a better preparation for when it comes out. So only in that aspect does Unity change how we do things with servers and things like that maintenances it's only in uh, putting fire under their asses to rethink them properly so we don't have these problems in the future but unity just so we close this topic once and for all unity is a visual change it will not affect how servers work it will not impact the way data is saved nothing it's purely visual on the client side should we take a quick break aslix yeah, i want to i want to add something to that so they sure. um i don't know if you mentioned or, or you went quickly over but the, uh, there are some people like just bes besides what happened yesterday that was uh, on Ankama's side with the server mm -hmm. crash, but mm -hmm. there are also some people who have a regular, a regular. Oh my god! Um, but they ha have very often that they can't log into the game. They have mm -hmm. server crashes. Uh, mm -hmm. I know for for a fact Viper has this as well, but it might be the, his internet. But there are people who have um, client issues with logging in. Mm -hmm. Unity would not fix that. <laughs> yeah that's either on your end mm. or it has something to do with the client and not <laughs> with unity <laughs> so yeah yeah that's exactly right Eslix. unity is a visual change just so we stop yeah. talking about this again and if anybody asks we should we should just add a command in chat exclamation mark unity <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Unity is client side. So what you see when you log in, the graphics, the colors, the movement of things, the sounds you hear, nothing to do with the server and how it sends data or how it saves it or whatever, how it pulls it or how it modifies it or whatever. It's completely client side. But he did qualify it, but Papino did qualify it by adding an extra little something on top of it. It's not completely just visual. Yes, that's true. But also the team that is handling the other side is trying to keep up with the influx of people that it might bring with um, the fact that people will want to play this game and not face any problems. So they're anticipating them. And that's why they deviated from their strategy of let's wait until the beta and do tests for three weeks and then roll out a good version that is quite stable. They've moved on from this and have used every Tuesday maintenance. Imagine this, so every week they're trying something. So that's why the servers have been so unstable for the last three weeks. Should we do a five minute break or two minutes maybe? two uh, three I minutes? don't want to take off some my clothes, I'm boiling, I've not... Uh, and I need to use the toilet. I'm just gonna read yeah. the chat really quickly if you have any questions. Do you have anything from your side? Yeah, even if they would make a server with 200 bots, it wouldn't make a difference either because it's not representative of uh, actual no. server. Yeah. And like they mentioned, if, if they write a code, they have to implement it straight away. Otherwise, the code will be outdated. So mm. that's the and problem. They can't, mm. they can't just be like, oh, uh, this week we have a new beta update. Come and, come and test. It's, it's just, uh, nah. I mean... I, I'm happy that they explain it this way because then at least we know what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. I mean, this is grand. This was impromptu. We were talking to him before he went live, right? Is that this guy? Hmm. The, the one on the right. The one on the right. That's why I said to him, uh, Bon courage. Have a, I'm wishing you the best of luck with this. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. they've never done anything like this as far as I know. They've never just improvised impromptu and come alive right let's talk about the problems that have been happening for the last two weeks mm -hmm. they don't have a script they're literally they were reading from the chat and just picking questions as they came and boom boom boom, boom. yeah i'm also happy that they they um mentioned yesterday server problems i think they will mm. mention it in the next part uh but uh 
That's yeah. such a good point. Usually, yeah. usually they don't say anything about these kind of things. If the servers right? are, are like weird and you can't lock for an hour, then they, it, it will get fixed eventually <laughs> and then you hear nothing about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There might be a tweet in a couple of days. But I just wanted to point out that in four days we will be in March or in a week we will be in March. And it is a year from when they implemented that disastrous yeah. uh, mount thing. So look at the difference. It was a year ago that they've made that change and never mentioned it until today. However, the bugs happened two weeks ago. And there was the biggest one was last week before the weekend. Uh, was it on Thursday? When they, they rolled back on Tuesday. They had another problem on Thursday. And then yeah. boom. On Monday, they're having a conversation about it. And so I think they're changing their ways. Um, I don't yeah, want to give them too much credit, but yeah, I think there's some change. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, communication is better than nothing. Like, even if you have oh, problems, like, oh, yeah. sure, it, it will not fix the problems, but at least talk about it so we know what's going on, right? 100%. It makes a big difference, doesn't it? But yeah. Let's do a two minute. <laughs> right. Hold on. Focus, 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 focus. <clears throat> Do I have three minutes to talk about last night's problem? Yes, you do have three minutes to tell us about what happened last night. Three yes. Oh, oh no, sir. Do I have three minutes to talk about last night's problem? You have three minutes to talk. Go on, go on. Last night around 10 p.m. we had connection issues, connection disconnections. That is also linked to another project that is a lot more invisible for you, but is very important for us. We're working on API and an API that's allows us to centralize oh this is spicy i need to focus a lot here you did mention api earlier so it hit me while yeah, listening I, and i like stopped I said, reading this is, this is the spicy part <laughs> like so before, you, before you continue basically what they're gonna talk about here is the exact uh, reason behind what was happening yesterday evening they are fully explaining everything which is really interesting because in, I think in 17 years of me playing Dover, they never explain how anything works. <laughs> wow. I mean, look look at his looks now. He's telling all of us off for having this laugh. <laughs> Did you see that, Gluto? That look is for you. Stop stop yeah. making jokes. <laughs> you got so three if, minutes. If anything is unclear, then I can do a short explanation. But let's just go and translate and uh, we will see. Ah, is that, is that a definition, Gluto? I'm just going to read that as if it were the definition. API can also just mean the rules that the client follows to talk to the server. Basically, probably something like that. Do you want to try another one? Essentially, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> I'm going to press play. I need to focus. I think I've had too much to drink too quickly and I'm tired. Oh, God. So... He has three minutes to explain what happened last night. Let's go. Which is very important for us. We're working on the on an API that allows us to centralize and acquire the information on all characters and in return being able to send it on the website, uh, on our internal tools. Today, in essence, the old method was to copy all the characters at midnight, which was extensive, labor extensive. Whereas now, this API is revolutionary. So this is also used, this API is used when you log in. So when you access the server, you see the list of characters that you have when you choose your server. It's the same API that is used. It's, it's really not... Uh, he's saying... Uh, this guy was picking up a question from chat. It was, someone was saying, is it public? They got excited and he said, uh, no, 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 really not public. This is internal stuff that we use internally. Uh, the shadow server last night uh, did lack uh, space, actual hardware space, which <laughs> provoked problems on this API, which provoked problems on other servers. So the fact is servers, servers are independent, but they have some services that are interlinked correlated one to the other so it's the this api that dragged problems from this server shadow onto the others but by chance by chance it happened last night because if it happened in the shadow event we would have lost it so now we're trying to rescale the shadow uh, server so that i'm telling you this before the event we're scaling the server so we don't have this problem at all when we release it yeah so we're trying to really really ramp up the scaling of the machine so we never encounter shit like this da -da -da. does that need translation 
Da, da, da. Did you want to say something, Alex? Uh, did, is this topic done or? I think so. Yeah, he's already picking up other questions. So in essence, Shadow Server had limited hard space because not many people use it. I imagine. And, I think. Uh, I think because of the thingy offense, more people play the Shadow Server maybe because of of the Ochre Dovus, of course, because it's so hard to get right. Yeah. So what I, I think it's pretty funny that they mentioned <laughs> that it had it was basically full with that they had no more spare discs. Uh, yeah, wow. discs. Made. Like <laughs> I have, I'm like um, picturing it. Like uh. how? What? How can you have no more discs? <laughs> I mean, in a game, like, <laughs> do, they, do they run an entire server on one computer with like one terabyte of data? <laughs> or something like that? I don't so, know. So basically, what happened is the disk space for the shadow server it was full, which crashed their uh, the API system, and because of all servers are running on the same API, API system, it, uh, it they crashed all of them, and you couldn't log in anymore. That that was basically the thing, which is uh, it's so weird, man. But I'm happy that they share this. That's outstanding, honestly. I quite I'm stumped at the level of honesty we're getting here. I'm not yeah. trying to defend them or make them look good. I'm just honestly stumped at how much they've given us in one session, impromptu, impromptu unplanned, more information that we've ever seen from them in the last twenty years. Exactly. <laughs> this is outstanding. I hope it continues. So, do we have any other questions? The question was, uh, the question is, why don't we put any sort of cosmetic rewards for what during the beta testing, uh, like an incentive? Somebody, somebody mentioned this earlier, didn't they, in chat? I did. Yeah, why don't they make beta more rewarding to have more people go into it and test stuff so they can uncover more problems and whatever? We have. We have thought about it so that we could find. Um, so we've been pulling our hair to try and find events during betas so that you can get rewards. And just, just, just a passion. I think there will be rewards in this bet. There will be a beta test that is. We try during every beta to have events to attract players that are linked to the updates and. By the same token, we've heard your uh, concern. So on the 5th of March, we will present this. But in the f two previous betas, we had this functioning. It was events, PvP events. Because the calendar wanted that. Because it was we were, they were changing alliances and Colosseum. So it made sense to have events related to PvP with cosmetics. So people can, um, um, can win those and attract. But it didn't work on everyone. Because it was so niche and PvP related. That not many people engaged with the beta. But they've yeah. taken note of that. And in the 5th of March and Kama Live. They will go back on it. And give us more detail. So PVM we of course event. want. Say again. They will do a PvM event. Ah, isn't that good? During the beta, that's cool. Yeah. So this time around, they will try and have a uh, reward system in the beta that will attract everyone, not just a niche group of people that PvP. I think that would be a bit more challenging, because if it's too easy, all players will have it, and and, and they will just not care for having it so we will try to find events that will be challenging to make it more of a reward a desirable i don't want to spoil too much but there will be a yeah it will be for pvm players the next one but the problem is if we do it every time here we are trying to think about a beta every time we have a technical topic we have to have a beta every time we'll have to make five cosmetics every month every month for every technical subject we want to test it might get a bit too much <laughs> It will start. It will become more difficult to think about the cosmetic side than the actual technical thing we want to tell. <laughs> so we're conscious. <laughs> isn't that a funny thing, isn't it, Slicks? <laughs> so they don't want to think too much about the cosmetics and rewards to the point of it overtaking the actual thing they want to test and why they opened the beta to begin with. So they're trying to calm it down. But next one will be a challenging event for PVM players. And it will have uh, good rewards that people will want to get their hands on. 
to attract the maximum people, to make the betas interesting and bring, the, bring people in. But to do them every time, it looks and sounds invisible or just at best far too much work. So we had this question about the beta. The beta, the continuous beta. If there are no rewards, there's nothing in particular that would pull you in if it's open all the time. So the modifications that we passed on Tuesday on the characteristics and the autosave feature and the change of data format for saving purposes. We've, we've added the sentence on the change log to warn people that there will be this modification, but for players it changes nothing. Ask people to go on the beta to not see anything different. Yeah. And if there's no cosmetics, it seems like, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken, but I'd be curious to see what it, it yields. But I don't think many players will come to the beta on the long term and stay long enough to test stuff. But if there are ever some people in there, if they go on the beta again and it's too desirable, they won't go on the official servers and we've bounced the problem the other way around. <laughs> Maybe it will work good. Maybe we could have uh, beta servers that were more populous than the real ones. I don't know. <laughs> it would be nice to watch and see. I have absolutely no idea how, um, on this question, I don't know how the beta servers would behave. It's a real question to ask ourselves because uh, it allows us to run more regular phasing tests, which there's a big interest behind it, but we need to know if it's sufficient or not. We need to be careful with it. I saw a question about um, the compensations this weekend because uh, was it the only, the Divine Thing event was the only thing that we've got? It's not excluded. Oh! it's not unforeseeable that we might give you some more things because of how hard the last few weeks were and maybe yeah. they don't feel like that was particularly enough as compensation on its own Ooh -hoo -hoo. But they don't promise it they don't promise it <laughs> they're not promising anything but just nope. look at the level of honesty dude i think there is something they just can't say this is what it is or <laughs> leah can't take it anymore <laughs> Yeah, so oh, the next no. part they will explain why they do the prospecting candies. It's, it's really? Because if they do like an event on the weekends, uh. there are always going to be some people who don't play on the weekends or they can't play or they will go away. Mm. So th those people will not get any, uh, uh. any compensation. So what they usually do is they do the subscription. They do the candies mm. and the scrolls, and then uh, you can choose when to, to use them. So <laughs> everyone will get compensated. But on the other hand, I think they will forget that we don't care about candies. Uh, yeah, I've not heard this bit, so this is completely new for me. <laughs> I don't want to make you promises now, promises now live, or, or I will get hit by Manaya and everybody else, but, <laughs> but it's not impossible that we'd come back to you and another time and be generous and give you some more exciting weekends. Um, oh, hold on, there was a question in chat. 500 you got that's ah oh, they're talking about the divine thingies yeah <laughs> all right because of the complexity and difficulty of the last weeks he's not going to promise anything but they don't foresee a future where we have another exciting weekend so do get some rest liak <laughs> odd is the organizer going to pose problem with easy entire cheats? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's something that has been noticed during the last beta, and that's why anti cheat has been pushed a bit because we need to talk about to talk to you with your habits and how you consume those and see with you how. This is why we need to see with you through the dev blog your habits on those before we can roll it out. I will allow myself a little question. It was that something, Slicks? No. Hmm? Did you say something? No. Ah, oh, no, no. Okay, okay. Ah, I think it's him. It's Papino that is humming and it sounds like you. <laughs> you are trying to talk. <laughs> I'm trying to find a way to Canopy Village and I'm lost as fuck. The Canopy Village? Yeah, the Zap. Ah. I went up and down and I, I'm, uh, I'm missing like a fool. Go from Tinril uh, up. Near yeah, the general one up, 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 up. Ah, I don't know what they're about to talk right now. The, I didn't get this bit where they've pushed the uh, uh, easy anti-cheat, which, which I was really excited about because it limited bots before it was released. 
uh, they've pushed it back because of I can't understand that bit they said because of our habits or something that's already in place now in the game and they need to check our habits and how we play the game before they can actually roll it out so it doesn't pose problem I think they will go or they will no go idea. over it in a later and come alive okay I'll allow myself a little a little question just a little question it's not necessarily for you but for chat because uh, uh, the reason why we've done this conversation is uh, because we've had some in the past and we wanted to do something completely different and that's why we had the poll on Twitter because rest assured uh, we do read your comments and you s uh, we see that you not necessarily want the <laughs> the candies uh, I, kn I know that people are fucking fed up with candy <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 we well ourselves if we could stop giving them we would be really <laughs> 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 we don't want to be giving you the candies guys <laughs> we really don't but it's more than we can handle <laughs> Uh, even him, because he's a player puppy, you know, he used to play the game and continues to and he's sick of it. Yeah. But for us, it allows us, because I've seen um, a player in the chat now just mention it, it allows us to give bonuses that the player can apply whenever they want as opposed to a weekend, just like this event right now. It's an event during the, the weekend, it works really well, it attracts players, but people who don't have the time to play, if they don't have the possibility to play this weekend, but they just miss this compensation completely, just like what happened with Gluto. But the idea with this candy is you give the player something they ac they can activate whenever they see fit. Maybe we could enhance it and better it, but we don't know what would completely fill this void. Know that when can there's I a rollback, that was you, wasn't it? Yeah. Can I say something about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll pause uh, and go back. I can counter argue that, and I think now, like, <laughs> put a nice uh, comment in the chat as well. Go on. If they they say they wanna they wanna compensate with something you can use whenever you want, mm. why the hell do they not give us compensation tokens for the subscription that you can accept whenever you wanna play? The subscription ah. that they actually gave us was instant. Mm. We did not get a token. I will actually wait. You know what? I will when once when the stream is done, I will put it in the creator uh, thing. I will tag uh, Manaya or whatever. But mm -hmm. they they sh they could just give us a compensation token for the subscription. They did it before. They could have done it again, but they didn't. Mm. I know, like those uh, sort of uh, certificates that you would have in your shop that you could activate whenever you wanted to use it, as opposed to automatically add it to your account. No, Benedetto, so there was a compensation package in the shop and it included one day of subscription and, and all the other stuff, right? But once you got the, the uh, so let's say it was like available for a week in the shop, once you bought it from the shop, the subscription was automatically added to your account. But what I'm saying is they should give you a token which you can accept whenever you want. That is such a good suggestion, Gluto. I'm gonna add it to the document now for whenever we speak to Papino. A new that, candy to get you. That is outstanding. If they have the ability yeah. to give you uh, a weekend where drop is enhanced in bosses and you can drop thingies, why don't they give you the PP candy? Why don't you get that? And when you double click it, it activates an event. Is because that, it that requires more coding. More coding, I imagine. I, as I said that, I was like, oh shit, that must be one of those really hard things to implement. They, they just want <laughs> easy stuff. Like everything they will do extra <laughs> will require coding and it will require more server crashes and it will be an infinite cycle of them um, giving compensation for compensation. For compensation, for compensation, yeah. <laughs> compensation inflation. And, and yeah, infinite dreams will explode as well. <laughs> oh, this is madness. Oh, poor, poor uh, infinite dreams. If two people fight somewhere in France, infinite dreams are bugged and they take a hit. <laughs> Yeah. Candy that activates uh, event for person 24 hours or a token for sub can be activated when they want. Thank you very much for that. That was such an excellent, excellent addition to the yeah. doc. 
That is really cool. It joins something that you've mentioned earlier, Eslex, which is the sub days instead of just immediately going on your account without any uh, choice from it. The only choice you have is whether you want those days or you don't want them. It's not yeah. when you use them. Yeah, so just to give you a quick example, I subbed my accounts for a week now, and then I will not sub resub them because I will go on a holiday, right? Mm. So when when I accept this 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 compensation package, Done. it will add to my subscription, but I will not use you it because I will go it. on a holiday. So basically, I don't get any compensation. So I I just want the token. That's and, and that's also what Gluto is saying. He had yeah. a busy weekend. Exactly. And he just completely missed the event. In essence, he missed an event. I'm finding my way to the stupid zap. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally just walking in circles, I think. <laughs> Let's continue. You can, you can look for guides online. There's plenty of them. Uh, so, uh, I completely lost, lost my track. So, the idea for the candy. I'm not going to say uh, the word I've said earlier because Liak picked me up on it. It sounds like a loot thing. <laughs> so prospection, not PP candy. Prospection candy. <laughs> so prospection candy. The idea behind giving us that as a reward is for us to be able to activate it whenever we need as opposed to an event that can be missed if you don't have time or whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> just like the event that we've had now it's a really good event that works well and attracts people but people who didn't have time the possibility to play during this weekend they've just, it's just passed them by this compensation did not affect them it just passed them by so the idea of this candy is to let you activate the bonus whenever you want as opposed to weekend. but maybe we could enhance it and better I don't know exactly what would um, allow us to perfectly solve for this but also you need to know when there's a rollback or in this spawn or unavailability, we can give as much as we can. But there's also always a frustration from ourselves, from our end, because you couldn't log in or you lost time. So we try and put the possibility to, for you to have a bonus that you can activate whenever you want. But but if you have any other ideas, please, uh, yeah, more accurate, better. Aha, aha. He's reading chat as he's saying if you have any ideas and people are bombarding them with ideas Which means they've never as far as I'm concerned. They've never asked the community. What would constitute good? Uh, compensation They've just been working with the ideas and thoughts they had and I think this is the first time They're hearing that people have ideas. <laughs> this is not a new employee. These are foundational devs that have worked for them for years <laughs> I, I'm absolutely stumped. Maybe they're concealing something. Maybe it's true Either way, it's not it's not good if they're finding this 20 years into the game that people are fed up of their fucking candy <laughs> I am set for life with these candies. I can literally <laughs> last for another 20 years, I think. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> it doesn't feel right. So the ideas are not lacking, as we can see here from the chat. There's no shortage. 10 billion cameras, someone made it. But also, for us, we need to find the compromise. We don't, yeah. We want the server's longevity and momentary satisfaction. I'm seeing a player that have lost Paragon. We can give you all the candies that we want. We will never be able to restore. Yeah. It's one of the problems that we have on the office now. There's so many different activities in the game to find one or many compensations that will oversee the entire aspects of the game. PvP, PvM, drops in game, quest fights. So many, it's really complicated. I don't know that we can find a perfect solution for this. And it's, we need to really think, we need to have a proper think about compensation. We need to enhance them and better them. Myself, I can't, I'm fucking fed up with these candies myself. I can't take <laughs> it anymore. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> Imagine a dev that can write one sentence and change that, telling you I'm fed up with candy. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have anything else? Mm. One last question for each because uh, the time we're, we're running short on time. So we've got two questions to go. I've taken one. I've seen a question on rollbacks. How does it function? What is it? How does it work? So in essence, we do saves at regular intervals at four, midnight, etc. So when we need to do a rollback, 
well, I saw the question, someone asked, how can we not do a rollback for just one aspect of the game instead of the entire game? So what we do in essence is we clean the server and then we re-inject the save that we have. So we can't really re-inject just one part of the game just uh, because there might be conflicts. Imagine that we save quest items but we don't save the quests. Then maybe we could have situations where the person has uh, evolved, evolved in the quest but he lost the item or he has the item and he's not yet started. So we can't really modify it in that chaotic way. Yes, Essex. That's a good one actually. Ah, about the save, how it works. Yeah. Uh, that's really cool. They completely delete the game and then paste the last version they had saved. Yeah, <laughs> but that, that's, yeah. that is what they want to change with the new uh, system that they're working on. So uh -huh, they can uh -huh, eventually uh -huh. roll back like 30 minutes. Because mm. like right now, the way it works... No uh, way. we got some new people in the chat. Midnight, the 4 p.m. Hmm? They have regular intervals that are fixed. Exactly. So if they have to uh, do a rollback, it has to be like to either eight, uh, 11 a.m. or like 4 p.m. or like midnight. Those are mm. the, the three times that they make backups. So they can't just do a 30 minute rollback. But mm. with the new system, they might might be able to. Yeah. But yeah, I'm glad they've acknowledged that there are... Uh, as the game is so complex and we all know that. Someone landed an exo, the other one dropped two paragons, someone finished a really hard quest fight. There's so many things to account for, PvP, and they can't really find a compensation that would solve for anything. But they've done two things, acknowledge that there's a big problem, they need to fundamentally rethink compensation as it is right now. And the other side, they said that they are fucking fed up with candy. So we know the solution is somewhere in between. <laughs> we don't know what it will be exactly, but I think they are ready to move away from prospection candy into something else while knowing that they can't find perfection. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't know about you guys, but anything other than prospection candy is more than welcome. <laughs> I'll take anything other than prospection candy. <laughs> So one of the objectives that we have for the projects that we have at the time being some of the technical ameliorations and enhancements we want to be hold on I'm gonna, of the projects that we're we are working on at the moment so the enhanced technical enhancement we want to be more flexible on rollbacks we want to do as as le least amount of them as possible but we want to be more flexible on them if we ever have to do them to inconvenience players the least amount of time but we can't also be flexible on rollbacks as it stands it's not an easy decision to take but it is always everything or nothing we either do the rollback or we don't do the rollback so for me i'm going to take research and development for unity for multi-accounting this is a question that we're Heard a lot. We make progress every week, honestly. We don't have anything specific or concrete to give you. It's research and develop. For those who don't know what R&D is, it's research and develop. So we're testing, we're doing our very first and early attempts, technical attempts to see what it gives, what, what we get. The big second step that we will start, well, this week, starting from this week, um, is to see the format that we will use for the game. In fact, we all have in mind what exists for WACFU. That's the model that everybody has. I don't want to promise you that if, if, and I use if, if it pops in the game eventually, that it will be the exact same thing as WACFU. WACFU has a system, an economy, a mode of gameplay that is completely unique. WACFU is not Dofus. So the interest of having multi-accounting on one client for Dofus is completely different and it wouldn't fit unlike the WACFU hero, hero system. So to go back to reality, we are still in the R&D phase. So once we have something concrete to show you, I'm very, very open to show you. Once we have anything technical that we can actually show you, we will definitely do that. And it will be worth it for us to show you our uh, progression on what we're doing. But for the time being, we don't have anything showable that we can show you. <laughs> something to do with debug commands or anything it's not worth showing you the code and the debug commands well it's progressing we're doing our tests we don't hold on it is progressing we're doing our tests 
and we really need to ask ourselves about the format adapted for Dofus, so we're not just copying and pasting, and see over time whether it will come or not. There is also a possibility where it doesn't come to the game at all, because it is not completely adaptable, and it's not something that would work for Dofus, then we won't bring it. Well, there it is. We have taken our final questions, unless there is something that is really... and I feel like there is something that is bothering you. Ah, well, there you go. There's one last question. <laughs> We are trying to the maximum to share things with you, technical stuff. This is why we've published the dev blog. We will try to publish more. We have the reflection, the idea of talking to you more about the API. It's something that is uh, in vogue, in fashion at the moment. Why not do a dev blog and show you the different APIs that we work on or things of a similar nature? If, if there are things that interest you, just tell us and we will put technical dev blogs relating to these things, if you want, of course. Ah, it's really good. These, these are things that pleasure. Uh, we really enjoy when you take interest in this. For you, they're mostly invisible, but for us, it is the actual work and reality that reality that we spend our time with. And hold on, I missed a little bit. Some elements that are technically invisible to you, but once they are in the game, you can see the amount of work that has been done by the team behind it. And it is always we appreciate it when you know the amount of work we've put in for you to play the game that you enjoy. So I think we've uh, covered everything. We're, we're nearing the end of the live. Thank you very much, Rebeck, for being here. Thank you, thank you as well. It was not uh, planned. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I hope that if I, we have answered some of your questions, especially what happened in the last weeks, and also towards the end, which we have uh, because we've had a Q and A. It's always a pleasure to converse with you, and hope you have a really good time in game. I am. I am. I am committing, I am committing now that in the hope that tomorrow we will have a maintenance that will be super clean. Hold on, let me, let me redo that bit because it sounds like a, it's a personal thing he wants to convey. I want to do it justice. I promise you, but I am committing. Even if, it, if it's not the case, I will redo another live tomorrow. I hope tomorrow the maintenance is clean and done. I really hope that it's really good. <laughs> and I promise you it will be clean, no rollbacks, everything will be alright. And having said that, I'll tell you goodbye and take care. And Rebek is telling us uh, goodbye but tomorrow because they have a live tomorrow for... I can't remember why exactly. Is it the Shadow? Hey, it's the Shadow Server thing. The Shadow, sh shadow Server event announcement.